Our story begins in the capital of South Korea. More precisely, in one of the high schools in the Gangkang district. One fine evening after class, our hero named Jean decided to confess his feelings for his best friend. He fell in love with her as a child, and only now he's decided to tell her. When she found out about Jin's feelings, the girl was very upset. She can't reciprocate his feelings. Jean supposed there might be awkwardness between them. He knew she wouldn't reciprocate, but he couldn't hide his feelings any longer. The girl didn't want to stop hanging out with the genie. She was interested in him, but as a friend. Even though Jean was jolly, kind, and perfect for being a guy. But he was overweight, which was a big turnoff to girls. In the end, they were just friends. Of course, their relationship would never be the same again. But to say that our hero was all alone. No, he wasn't. He had a best friend who always supported him in everything. He was the only one who knew what Jin was really like. He only needed one look to know what was in his friend's heart. After the incident, he tried to cheer Jean up by telling him jokes and funny stories from his own life. When suddenly Jin stopped, lifted his head and said, You won't believe it. She said she wanted to concentrate on her studies. That phrase sounded ridiculous coming out of her mouth. After all, she was one of the three worst students in her class. But that's behind us now. All his life, Jean had been preoccupied with one question. Why him? He didn't understand why everything in his life was happening to him, because he did everything he could to get better every day. But still, everyone thought he was a total loser, and all because he was overweight. And it's true. It was a great mystery, both to Jean and to his friend. It's not that Jean wasn't lazy. He was an amazing athlete. He ran the fastest, jumped the highest, etc. And he was meticulous about calorie counting every meal he ate. And he never ate sweets. If the average person followed half of Jean's regimen, he'd look like an Olympic athlete. In desperation, our hero even went to the hospital. He had consultations with all possible doctors. And everyone said the same thing. If Jin Un loses weight no matter what he does, it's 99 times out of 100, his genes are to blame. He'd feel better if it were really like this. Though unfair, he could surrender with a clear conscience. That as a child and now, his mother always called him handsome. As if it was something taken for granted with such a handsome father. But the problem was, Jean never saw his father. The only thing he had left behind was this picture. Also, his mother and grandmother often told stories about his father. From their stories, he was a famous wrestler. And though his career was short, his strength and records were astonishing. He was even called the Invincible Buffalo, according to his mom. He's not overweight, and that with his heredity, the muscles would come on their own. But most of all, she was concerned about her son's health, because by constant training and calorie control, Jean practically did not eat and exhausted his body to the limit. And that's when Jean decided to give up sports and dieting and live the life he really wants to live. What's the point of dieting if nothing works? It's amazing that Jin Nei gave up early. He spent his whole life on sports and diets without getting any results. Instead of continuing to torture himself, he decided to eat whatever he wanted. But looking at the packet of instant noodles in his hands, Jin realized that he had already spent too much time and energy to give up. I gotta hand it to him. Such willpower would be the envy of anyone. An evening jog at sunset. It's become a ritual for him. The end of the day. Genie always ran the same route, at the same speed. But today, his navigator showed that he had passed the four-kilometer mark. Jin was pleasantly surprised to hear that. After all, it's faster than his usual pace, despite the lack of any progress. Jean was determined not to give up. Jean ran a record 15 and a half kilometers that evening. Amazingly, he didn't even notice he'd done it. He just cleared his mind and ran. Looking around, Jean noticed that it was already night and he was in a place unknown to him. When suddenly, our hero noticed the silhouette of a man sitting on the bridge. The stranger said, Your speed is commendable. You have grown into a natural little pig. But even so, you could not overcome the power of your blood. The stranger added, When suddenly, this man jumped from a great height straight at Jean. At first sight, it was clear to our hero that this was an unusual old man. He was incredibly huge and strong. Jin could feel his dark aura even with his fingertips. The old man looked at Jin and said, You don't have to be afraid of me. My name is Grandpa Mangte. According to an ancient legend, the old man Mangte, ancient too who collected disobedient children in his sack. But in this world, he watches over the yukai of this peninsula. He acts as a divine judge. But from the look on Jin's face, the old man realized he didn't understand a word he said. So he said, Well, that's all right. There's no need to talk anyway. You don't mind coming with me, added the Mangte. 
Suddenly, his sack seemed to pounce on Jin and shackled him. Apparently the legend was true. Trapped inside the bag, Jin couldn't even move. It was pitch black all around him, but the confinement didn't last long. A few minutes later, the elder freed Jin. Jin hit his head hard during the fall, and then he thought that while running, he got sick and passed out. And it's all just a hallucination. But when he opened his eyes, he saw that what had happened was real. The surrounding world was similar to the real world. The only thing was that everything around it was emitting a strong aura, putting what he saw and the old man's words together. Jin realized he was in the spirit world, better known as the world of the yokai. Mangte said, Look around and ascertain with your own eyes. All of them, the inhabitants of this world. People once thought of them as gods. They were feared and honored. But now they are considered only a fiction, and they exist only as imaginary beings. Every 666 years, a great festival is held to choose the king of the yokai. Every clan in the world, including the Korean Peninsula, must select and send at least one candidate with outstanding talents. 666 years ago, one of the yokai rose above his enemies and became their king. And this year, there will be another festival to choose a new king. Jin cried out in horror at what he heard. This is all very interesting and fascinating, but what am I doing here? Mangte sighed heavily and replied, Have you been listening to me carefully? Each clan is obliged to send at least one candidate. You are the only one left in both worlds who inherited the goblin bloodline, the old man added. Jin learned from the sage that he's a fourth generation goblin. So you could say he's practically a purebred. So much had happened in the last few minutes that our hero had no time to realize it all. And the old man's words seemed insanely idiotic. Because all his life he thought he was just a regular loser. But if what the old man said was true, it would explain a lot of things. When suddenly, right in front of the genie, a huge pillar of light burst out of the ground. It emitted an incredible amount of dark energy. Jean had to close his eyes because of the bright light, but when he opened them, he saw a 10-meter monster in front of him, without eyes but with a huge mouth and fangs. And then the Mangte said, mistake or no mistake, but you must pass the test. But that wasn't the weirdest part. The old man said that if Jin defeated the spirit, he could eat it. The monster that stood before the genie was a big-horned spirit demon. Legend has it that if a man falls into its mouth, he will have to go through long, dark tunnels, which would lead to hell if one was afraid, and to heaven if one doesn't feel fear. Apparently, if Jin falls into his mouth, he's going to hell. I mean, he was scared to death. The monster didn't hesitate. He immediately attacked our hero, with a wild desire to tear him apart. He only wanted to kill Jin for one purpose, to eat him. After all, the last time he had eaten human meat was during the last festival. Naturally, Jin couldn't do anything against this demon. He received his blows time after time. The old man was even beginning to question his choice, and he couldn't allow an ordinary person to participate in the festival on his behalf. So Jin had a choice that was both easy and hard. Prove he had goblin blood and win, or die. But the monster wasn't willing to let Jin go for nothing. The demon punched, threw, and even tried to rip Jin apart, but it never managed to kill him. At this point, it was clear that Jin was indeed a half-breed. But that's not enough. In order to win, he must kill the Yukai. Looking at the half-dead Jin, the monster said, Wow, you're surprisingly sturdy. I thought you'd be soft as a rice cake. But this is more fun. Tough meat can be much tastier if it's soaked in fear, added the monster. That attack was the strongest of all. It's impossible to survive. Since ancient times, the abilities of goblins have been truly limitless. And of all things, their strongest ability and weapon at the same time was the game, which they enjoyed. Being a goblin, you had absolutely no need to learn, because the talent and skills were already genetically imprinted in their bodies. In other words, all goblin blood possessors were cheaters in the spirit world. They could do anything the first time without learning it, and Jin was the last of his kind. With his true power awakened, he could easily defeat such a monster. By winning this battle, Jin became the candidate of Korea at the Spirit Festival, and by the looks of it, he has a real chance of becoming the king of the yokai. After the battle, Jin woke up and began his normal day. After school, he and his friend went to the local supermarket to get something to eat. Jean told his friend Derek the whole dream from beginning to end. The only thing that confused him was that he didn't remember falling asleep. That it was a dream, Jin wasn't sure. But common sense said it was a dream. More doubt was sown by Derek, 
who said that people usually dream about things they often encounter in reality. But Gene's never done any wrestling in his life. He had only attended boxing training once to lose weight. Jin replayed the throw in his head over and over again. It was as if he knew what he had to do from the beginning. He even got the feeling that if he got in the ring now against a professional fighter, he could beat him. Eventually, Gene decided that stress was to blame, and his desire to lose weight, bordering on obsession. When he blinked, Jin saw that he was skinny and pumped up again. He shouted in surprise, Did I fall asleep again? But as he looked around, he saw Mangti coming towards him, but not alone this time. Now Jin is sure that everything that's going on around him is not a dream. Upon realizing this, a thousand questions popped into his head. But the most important one was how to get home. The girl who came up with the old man said, Frankly, I'm a little disappointed. I've never seen a half-man before. And the first person I met was a pathetic dumbass. How can there be goblin blood in that? The girl added, no matter how displeased she was. But Jin had passed the old man's test and was now a contender for the throne of the Yukai. Though she was sure Jin wouldn't stand up to even the weakest of contestants, at least because he doesn't have magic. All he can do is use brute force. Jin heard them talking, but he didn't care about that. And then he said, I passed the test, bring me home. But the old man only smiled in reply. When he came closer to the genie, he said, You have done well. While you slept, I gave my verdict. Because old man Mengte is the sole judge in the spiritual world, his word is law. Speak to the spirits. The wise man said, I didn't expect anything like this, neither did you. He succeeded in killing the Geokugri. I think there's no doubt that this guy has goblin blood in his veins. I, old man Mangte, judge of the yokai of this peninsula, am ready to pronounce my verdict. All those gathered here are witnesses to it. Today I declare that the young man standing before me is not a human being, but a yokai like us. If no one has any objections, go spread the news all over Busan. As soon as the old man announced his verdict, all the yokai scattered all over the peninsula. With the new news, now his name, like the names of all yokai, will be recorded in the registry and no one will dare harm him or capture him without a good reason. Jin was certainly glad that no one could hurt him in this world, but he still asked to go home. The girl couldn't stand it any longer and shouted, You're either pretending to be an idiot, or you really are. You're a yukai now. We are allowed to enter the land after reaching the age of 500 years or a certain ability. Jin swore that he wouldn't have any trouble. He'd never been in trouble in his entire life, once again rejecting him. The old man was filled with anger. According to the laws of the spiritual world, rebellious yukai will die. But then, the genie jumped backwards. It was automatic. He didn't even have time to think about it. Whether Jin thinks he's human or not, his body has an opinion about it. Of all the yokai species, goblins are by far the strongest, even though the Gainan are now at the level of a congenital child. His power is many times greater than any human being. Our hero's veins flow with limitless potential. Jin realized the weight of responsibility he had on his shoulders in this world. Suddenly he said, I have to go home. Waiting another 500 years is ridiculous. That made the old man laugh a lot. And he told me in confidence that the genie would be 500 years old in six months. And the limit of 500 years was imposed by the current king. 666 years ago, the yukai were free to enter and leave the human world whenever they wanted. All people could do when encountering them was run with all their legs, hide in fear, dreading their appearance in the night, or hope for the mercy of the strong yokai that were friendly to the humans and lived with them, fear and worship. This was the attitude of the yokai, the people before the election of the present king. However, after the end of the last festival, the newly elected king for some reason didn't like this order of things. The day he came to his throne, the king wrote a new law in the blood of the yokai he had defeated. This law forbade harming humans, or at least revealing his identity to them and approaching them. Thanks to the new law, people are no longer afraid of spirits. Or rather, they simply forgot about their existence. But that will soon come to an end. In six months, the king's reign will be over. He will abdicate, and the law he wrote will be abolished. The yokai even named the day the current king leaves the throne. They called it the sunset of humanity. This is the day the yokai have been waiting for for years. Most spirits. They want to invade the human world and awaken the fear and awe that mankind has forgotten. For the next six months, Jean can just wait for that day, or he can learn to use his powers. Our hero realized that in fact the existence of mankind depended on him. And then he said, Elder, 
How strong must I become to be considered the strongest yukai? Old man asked Jean why he had suddenly changed his mind abruptly. But the answer was more than obvious. Jean wanted to save humanity from destruction. It is impossible for a 17-year-old boy to reliably predict future consequences. However, one thing is abundantly clear. The world will become a much more dangerous place for people. At the very least, he must protect at least those he cares about. Luckily, it's not so bad thanks to the goblin blood. He might not be able to compare to pure blood goblins, but if he learned to use half of his abilities properly, no yukai would dare to harm the people he cared about. And even though the odds of that happening are extremely slim, you never know what might happen. If the genie wins the festival and becomes the new king, he could extend the law. But unlike Jin and the old man, the girl was in a skeptical mood. She was sure that it was impossible to reach the level of a festival winner in six months, when suddenly Mangte said, By the way, I haven't introduced her to you yet. Let me correct that misunderstanding. This rude girl's name is Lydia. Like Jin, she's going to participate in the festival, only from her own clan. And unlike Jin, Lydia was born a yukai. And then the girl said, I heard you say that you intend to pass the test that allows you to enter the human world. Don't you dare take that back or I'll get angry. The thing is, like Jin, she wants to go to the human world. But the old man kept putting off her request. Lydia was greatly angered by this. She didn't understand why she had to undergo this test. After all, she is superior to 90% of the yokai in strength and transformation skills. The old man knew that the girl would easily pass this test. But strength alone was not enough to avoid exposing herself to people. Lydia had to learn patience and self-control, even though the girl was angry with the old man about it. But she still showed respect and understanding. The elder said, However, a happy coincidence has happened. There couldn't be a better opportunity for you to show yourself. Can you mix with people without causing any trouble? As you may have noticed, our guest is human. And we couldn't find a better candidate to test your abilities, the old man added. In other words, the old man appointed Lydia as Jin's teacher. And she was to teach him all the basics of spirits in just a month. But most importantly, the old man will allow both Lydia and the genie to visit the human world. If he sees significant progress in a month, Lydia was horrified by this assignment. She was sure it would be impossible to teach someone like Jin anything in a month. Seeing the girl's indignation, Mangte said, If you don't want to bother with him, then just wait six months. A month earlier, a month later, what difference does it make? Lydia, you have a choice to train him and go to the human world in a month or to give up and wait, the old man added and disappeared. But before he left, he said he didn't think it was mission impossible. Lydia had a choice, of course, but she didn't want to wait any longer. Plus, she couldn't disappoint the old man. The girl was determined that she would try to make Jin a warrior. Suddenly she said, I know this is a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it. Do you know what the power of the yokai spirits is? Naturally, Jin didn't know. Lydia sighed heavily, looked into the distance, and said, I see. Then I have no other choice. After saying that, Jin felt the ground shake. It was like a real earthquake, and the reason for that was the resurrected monster that Jin had previously defeated. Jin was truly horrified by what he saw. He was sure he had killed the monster. The monster's goal was still to kill our hero. But Lydia couldn't let that happen. She would have to wait six months to enter the human world. Unlike humans, whose race offers them no advantages, the strength of the yukai is directly related to their species and lineage. The difference between them is the difference in potential, skills, and abilities each species possesses. The difference between them is the difference in their potentials, skills, and abilities that each species possesses, with the disappearance of the pure-blooded goblins. Opinions are divided as to which species of yukai is the strongest on the peninsula, but if all spirits were to set aside their pride, most would give the same answer, namely, wild animals and nine-tailed foxes by tacit agreement of the majority, closest to the top of the yokai food chain on the Korean peninsula. One surreal scene changed into another right in front of Gina's eyes, but the boy was no longer afraid. But standing there with his mouth hanging open wasn't the best way to deal with the situation. What he now sees is his new reality, to which he is obliged to adapt in some way. During the battle with the monster, Lydia began her first lecture, her tail and the binding chains. It's all magic. Magic is the ability to absorb and harness the energy and powers of the world around you. There are two types of magic. It can be innate and acquired. Lydia is a representative of innate magic. There were very few innate mages among the goblins. When the user gets used to magic, using it becomes as natural as breathing. 
But acquired magic is another matter entirely. Any Akai can use it once they learn it. In this case, training and practice is a must, not to mention talent. When suddenly Lydia said, See that guy in chains? He's been ignoring training, relying on his natural strength and size, and now he's standing there bound by a simple shackling spell. Since Jean and Lydia were in this situation, she decided to teach him everything she knew. But first, she wanted to get one thing straight. If Jin's results don't satisfy her, she will kill him. For someone who just a few minutes ago was still human, training is going to be incredibly hard. In the course of training, Jin could die if he was lazy. But even on those terms, Jin agreed. If he's going to do something, he's going to do it to the best of his ability. And if he dies, at least he'll know he tried. When suddenly the guy said, Lydia, look, I really need this power. I have to get it at any cost. I don't have to worry about my own life right now even though she thought Jean was a total loser. But his fighting spirit pleased her. And the first thing Lydia said was for Jin to eat. As she said earlier, using magic requires absorbing energy, of energy that all the Ekai in this world possess. At the moment, Jin has too little of it. Under normal circumstances, the body is energized simply by breathing the air of this world, eating food and drinking water. But Jin only arrived here today. From the diet of a normal human being, he hasn't had a chance to store any energy. So the power he was born with is all he has. And then Lydia says, Say, are you hungry? After the battle, you must be hungry. Well, to be honest, it's the constant dieting. Jin had gotten used to not eating for 24 hours. So he didn't feel hungry. But what we experience is often from reality. Jin felt an incredible pain in his entire body, and all his veins swelled up and began to glow purple. It felt like cobra venom coursing through my veins. My whole body ached, and my limbs were no longer obedient. As Lydia said, there was too little energy left in his body. And if you consider that it was very little from the beginning, and after the battle with the demon, there were only a few crumbs left. That's why Jean was showing symptoms of spiritual exhaustion. Here, as in the human world, living organisms constantly need to replenish their energy reserves. Well, the solution to that problem is pretty easy. Experiencing unrealistic pain in his entire body, Jin was willing to do almost anything. The yokai have their own rules. If the judge publicly declares you the winner of a duel, the loser's life is in the winner's hands. He can eat the vanquished and absorb their energy. This is the easiest and most effective way to gain strength, and given the size of this monster, Jin could totally satisfy his hunger by devouring it. At that moment, Jin went forward without thinking, but not of his own free will. He was driven by instinct. For the first time in his life, he felt a hellish voice that could not be contained. Desire intensified by the whisper of the nine-tailed fox, and his mind was completely eclipsed by the hunter's instinct. However, Lydia had overlooked something. She had undoubtedly succeeded in awakening Jean's true nature, but she had forgotten that it is not the mind that flows goblin blood that requires strength. That was why, when she awakened the true Jin, his goblin soul wanted a bigger and stronger victim. Jin wanted to pounce on the lithium, rip its head off and eat it, absorbing all the energy of a nine-tailed fox. Lydia had not expected such a development, but she was nevertheless prepared for them. Relying on her magical powers, she used a restraining technique to stop Jin. The girl said, I realize you're hungry, but you shouldn't be so arrogant. Did you really think someone like you could eat me? It's my fault, though. I look too defenseless. Don't worry, I'll teach you manners, Lydia added. And here again is the girl's flaw. Since she's never met a goblin before, she doesn't know their true strength. And for that reason, she underestimated Jin. Of course, restraint isn't the strongest technique in her arsenal. But still, she was surprised to see that Jin was able to get out of it. Even though Jin is a half-breed, a goblin is still a goblin. And that's when Lydia decided to use her trump card. Anyway, now she recognizes Jin's true power. In an even fight with a goblin would be very difficult for her. So she decided to summon the great blessed demon king. This technique summons a huge fist that can knock down any spirit. It's a technique Lydia usually uses to kill someone, but Jin was able to survive her. But even if he dies, it's no big deal. After all, he voluntarily agreed to the training, knowing full well that he could die. Something incredible just happened. Jin has only recently awakened and already possesses a unique magic. Magic that even the strongest goblins possessed only a few. Despite Jin's shortcomings, he displayed an ability that could be considered a symbol of the goblin race. Jin has awakened the goblin club. Unique magic. To see such a thing from a half-breed is simply amazing. Lydia is no ordinary yokai. 
but you can't call her a genius either. She was better described as a nugget. She was the only one of her kind who could get as many as nine tails in less than a hundred years. Someone like her is born once every few thousand years. That's why she understood everything perfectly. Seeing in person an ability that had disappeared from the world for hundreds of years, she realized what a dangerous skill she would have to deal with for the first time in her life. When you consider just her limitless amount of energy, she just can't lose to him. However, Jin's aura was so strong, wild, and intimidating that Lydia began to doubt her own power. In time, the Goblin's Club was able to transform into an aura of thunder. Such a strong and ominous aura. The spirit world hadn't seen one in a very long time. This time, thanks to her fist technique, Lydia was able to stop the Goblin's Club. However, it couldn't be said that it was easy, unlike Jean. The girl had one slight advantage. She could still think for herself. Realizing that the fight had gained high momentum, Lydia decided to unleash all her talents. Advanced Fist Technique Armor-Piercing Spirit Fist With that blow, Lydia was able to briefly calm Jean's wild desire for murder. But for how long? Though she'd never seen a real goblin before. But she had heard many stories about them, and knew that even this attack wouldn't be enough to kill him, given Jin's amazing stamina. I'd have to attack him at least six more times before he came to his senses. She had no desire to kill him, but it was her duty to bring him back to consciousness. So she continued to beat him. When suddenly, Jin was able to stop one of the attacks with his bare hands, without resorting to magic. With astonishment, the girl shouted out, Impossible! Even though it's only one arm, it can really stand up to the Great Demon King, a weapon that can freely change its form, depending on the situation and the will of its master. Because of this, in the days of the Goblin Clan's prosperity, the Yokai called the Goblin Club a weapon that could become anything. His style changed along with his form. It is not easy to adapt to such a thing. Even if you don't consider the power of this club, its efficiency and flexibility are amazing. Now this fight has become just a training exercise for me. It became a true battle of the strongest contenders for the throne of the king. Lydia unleashed a barrage of powerful attacks on Jin. But even so, he was still on his feet. The girl recognized that most spirits that were 100 and 200 years old were no match for the genie, which is why goblins were considered the strongest. Jin, barely awake, is capable of such a thing. But this whole battle had gone on long enough. Lydia decided it was time to end it, whether Jin died or not. No matter how effective the Goblin Club is, Jin's strength is already running out. If he continued like this, his body would eventually fail. But Lydia didn't wait for that to happen. She summoned the power of her five tails. If when activating one tail, the girl can only summon the hands of the Demon King. When activating five tails, she can summon the entire Demon King along with his arms. Thanks to his spear, the Demon King can deliver slashing blows with incredible power. Most spirits would have taken a single blow from the Demon King, but not a genie. This one only slowed him down. But with a series of six blows, Lydia finally managed to stop Jin. But she shouldn't be proud of herself. It wasn't her attacks that caused Jin to lose. It was his exhaustion. Came closer. And looking at his body, Lydia said, I'm sorry. I tried but you don't have long to live. The decay of the body due to lack of energy has already begun. But as my teacher used to say, if you don't know your body's capabilities, don't push your luck, Lydia added. Eventually, Jean's body stopped showing any signs of life, and everything around it was destroyed. But Lydia was only saddened that the old man would scold her for it, when suddenly Jean coughed and his veins glowed again. That meant he could still be saved. Then the girl decided to save him, but only for her own gain. In addition to attacking techniques, Lydia also had healing techniques in her arsenal. As we know, there are several ways to get energy in this world, but there is another way. One spirit can share some of its energy, and the quickest way to do it is through a kiss. By sharing some of her energy, Lydia saved Jean's life. Now, all he needs to do is rest, and regain his energy on his own. Lydia looked at him and said, Five tails, plus the fox bead energy I released. I'll eat you to death if you don't justify the expense. After a few hours, Jean came to his senses again and felt great. The only question he asked you is where he is. His mind is still torn between two worlds. Well, the slightly ajar door, through which a bright violet light was bursting, let the genie know that he was still in the spirit world. When all of a sudden, Lydia comes through that door. She's holding a tray with a bowl of soup. There was no trace of the old prejudiced look, but what emotion was radiating from her face was unclear. When he saw the concern Lydia showed, Jean said, I'm really sorry. I remember everything I did. 
I don't know how it happened. I was fully aware of everything, but I couldn't control my body, Jin added. The genie was indeed incredibly ashamed of what he had done. Lydia had wanted to help him, and he had exposed him to all the dangers. But the girl didn't care at all. She had pretty much forgotten this battle already. Now she needed Jin to drink what she had brought. Surprisingly, this soup smelled pretty good. It had a slight, pleasant smell of molasses. Taking the first sip, Jin thought Lydia had brought him some kind of herbal tincture, but the aftertaste almost made Jin vomit. After swallowing what was in his mouth, Jin asked what the girl had added to the soup. Lydia said with a smile, If you spit that out, I'll kill you. And as for the composition, you don't want to know. Just take your time, but you must drink it all. And while you're drinking, listen to me carefully. First of all, there's something you're forgetting. That big guy with the big mouth got away while we were fighting. However, his life still belongs to you. He'll probably curl up in some corner and lick his wounds for the next hundred years. Because he knows that if he gets caught, he'll be eaten. Jin suddenly interrupted Lydia and said, The medicine seems to have really helped me. But is there any other way to get stronger? This question made the girl laugh a lot, and then she asked, Another way? Look at him. Still thinks he's human. Unless you're willing to hurt someone to make yourself stronger. But before she could say anything, Jin interrupted her and said he didn't mean it. Of course, he still hadn't gotten used to the idea of having to kill and eat yukai. But frankly, from his point of view, they're just dangerous monsters who want to hurt the humans if nothing is done. And if he doesn't do something about it, in six months' time, they're going to suffer an unenviable fate. And if it's to kill, he'll kill. If it's to eat, he'll eat. After all, he said earlier he'd do his best, and he's not in the habit of reneging on his word. And when Jin asked if there was another way to get stronger, he meant is there any other way to get stronger even faster? As people have said, the most effective way to become stronger is to eat other spirits. But this is only possible if both parties agree to duel. If this rule didn't exist, the weak would simply be eaten by the strong. But in the situation with the jinn, there was a special case. So in the future, jinn should not hope for an easy sacrifice. He may be one of the few with goblin blood. But many have already seen how strong he is in battle. And rumors of him have already spread throughout the area. So those spirits that jinn could easily defeat will avoid him by a mile. And those who agree to duel are not easy opponents. They are all yokai who are no match for a genie. Thanks to the potion Lydia made, Jin's energy reserves are up a bit, but it's still not enough. And since Jin was at fault for letting go of a large prey that could have restored him in seconds, Lydia had prepared a small gift for him. When he came out into the yard and saw the gift of jeans, he shouted in surprise, Lydia, you should reconsider the notion of a gift. Lydia caught a low-grade monster for Genie, thanks to which the Genie can replenish his energy supply. Jin realized that sooner or later he would have to eat her kai, but he didn't think it would be so soon. Lydia didn't just catch a monster. She had caught one of those who had lost the right to be called a yukai. Every spirit has a purpose in life, but there are those who lose their purpose and completely lose their reason, surrendering to their instincts. Jin himself has been such a yokai recently, but he's an exception to the rule. Those who lose the right to be called yokai have committed unauthorized crimes. For this, they are no longer considered spirits and are called beasts, depriving them of any rights. At least that's what they are called on the Korean peninsula. Even though this monster is actually a yukai. But here he is considered a common beast. His destiny is to be eaten. But even with such a low social status. Doesn't mean the beasts won't defend their lives. And Jin is as easy on me as it may seem at first glance. No matter how disgusted he is. He has to get stronger. No matter what it takes. Observing what was happening. Lydia was very surprised. After all, she thought Jin would be hesitant but it turned out that he adapted to the conditions of the world quite quickly. In the end, it means nothing. After all, he's fighting against an outcast. His opponent, a member of the Flame Dog tribe, used to be quite a famous fighter. However, obsessed with representing his tribe at the festival, he kidnapped and devoured other yukai without permission. Unable to handle that much energy, he ended up going insane. Then the judge revoked his license. So far, all Jean had done was dodge all the already flaming dog. It seems that Jim, being sane, can't use a goblin club. Well, that's not surprising. He had only recently entered the spirit world and learned of his origin. The fight was not in Jin's favor from the start. Even though his opponent was out of his mind, he was still much stronger. Especially since it's not easy to use conventional wrestling techniques. It was a brutal, effective way to awaken a goblin's instincts. Which usually only kick in when he's on the verge of death. 
but Jin managed to finish off the fire dog before his goblin abilities fully awakened. As Jin had said earlier, he had never practiced martial arts in his life. He had only come to boxing training once. Unlike other guys who come to martial arts training, his goal wasn't strength or defeating anyone. He just wanted to lose weight. It was a simple but desperate desire, and despite his best efforts, the training was not yielding any results. But Jenny was giving up. Since third grade, he had tried out for a total of 16 different sports. Though he had not been training for long and had not been able to lose weight, his efforts and the natural agility of the goblin allowed him to master all kinds of martial arts. And because of that, he was able to defeat the fire dog. With a victory, Jin wondered how he could eat him. Watching the fight, Lydia hoped it wasn't one of his innate abilities. After all, it looked like a technique created by humans, which was completely inappropriate for a yukai. Wants Jin from becoming a yokai only recently, he has already been able to adapt to the new environment and use this technique. His potential was far greater than Lydia had expected. Realizing all the specifics of our hero, the girl began to think what she should do next. When all of a sudden, Jean screamed, Lydia, I think I won already! I don't have to literally eat it, do I? The girl smiled and replied, No, of course not. But what makes you think you've already won? Damn it! Jin was pretty sure he'd beaten him. But the fire dog was still alive and was able to bite through Jin's right shoulder. If this had happened in the normal world, Jin would have bled to death. But thanks to the previously absorbed energy of the spirit world, Jin is more resilient than ever. Of course, the wound was terrible. The monster had bitten off most of his shoulder. The fear of the wound had taken complete control of the genie. And there was no trace of his lightning-fast reaction. The main reason people fear injury is not pain, and the loss of limbs, the fear of losing a part of your body forever. It is one of the primal fears that every human being is born with. It's enough to send a 17-year-old boy into a real despair. Jin was not yet aware of his ability to regenerate, which is only available to goblins. So the regrown shoulder frightened our hero even more than the loss of it. But it was too soon to relax. The fire dog continued to attack, and quite successfully at that. What's interesting is that Jin felt absolutely no pain when he was injured. Apparently, this is one of the features of his healing. The speed and strength of healing directly depends on the amount of energy remaining. Humans and Yukai. There are so many differences between them that it is impossible to count them all. But if you have to pick the most important thing, it would definitely be the body's durability and regenerative ability. From it also comes the difference between their way of thinking and behavior. But even among spirits, the genie's regeneration is at the highest level. As long as you're alive, injuries are a mere annoyance. Once a being realizes this simple truth, the mind will no longer limit the body in action. This is the philosophy of spirits regarding their bodies. Realizing their full potential, they discover new limits to their physical capabilities. And Jean was no exception. When he saw what his body was capable of, he stopped holding himself back, launching incredibly dangerous and risky attacks. But it took its toll. Jean felt like his arm was about to break, but it was worth it. His punches are much stronger now than they were before, although the recoil feels like he's been hit by a train. However, he's not the only one whose body can regenerate, but thanks to the goblin blood, he does it faster than anyone else. So Jin still has time before the fire dog is resurrected. Lydia came up to our hero and said, Your previous blow was not bad. The force and the point of impact were correctly calculated. Even though he didn't die, he won't be able to get back on his feet quickly. What's it like? Keep your head up. Think wisely during battle and use magic for the first time in your life, the girl added. But the genie didn't know what she was talking about. After all, he had just punched that monster in the face. Using magic, and it doesn't have to be something grandiose. Magic wasn't just high-level magic. It could be used in many different ways. For example, Jin's regeneration is also a type of magic. It affects the body, even though Jin didn't have full control over the process. And even his final blow was the result of using magic to enhance his physical abilities. Besides the fact that the blow was stronger than usual, Lydia asked what Jin felt at that moment. Our hero wasn't completely sure what he felt, but it felt like an electric shock. Because of his lack of experience, the genie won't be able to feel it fully yet. But it was 100% magic. Real combat experience was also one of the reasons Lydia made Jin fight the monster. In a fight where your blood is spilled and victory is not guaranteed, you unwittingly try to use magic. Still, the genie managed to surprise Lydia. She didn't think he'd have to roll face down on the ground. But at least Jin learned an important lesson. It's all part of becoming a yukai. 
when suddenly the girl said, As much as I hate to admit it, you're quite talented, even more than I expected. But now it's time to finish what we started. Before you can absorb the fire dog's energy, Jin must kill him. Before Jin did it, Lydia advised him to finish the monster in one blow. After all, it would be better for both him and the monster. The leader also said that most yokai the pearl of energy is just above the navel. If you do it right, the monster won't even feel pain. To do things quickly because of one time in the genie has to do it with magic. But doing something for the first time is always hard. And now even more so, killing for ambition. To absorb the energy of others to become stronger. No matter what the purpose or justification, not everyone would do something like this. But there's too much at stake to question your actions, especially since time is short is the pearl nucleus that contains all the energy of the spirit. If you swallow it, the power of the owner with the pearl will pass to Jin. When he absorbed it, our hero expected something incredible. But he did not feel any change. As a friend, a strange-looking crow sat on Jin's shoulder and said, Weird. Usually when you swallow her, everyone is dead at once. The talking crow scared Jin quite a bit. He was not yet accustomed to all the oddities of the spirit world. That crow was actually a transformation magic of one of the young Kai. Apparently Lydia and this girl knew each other. Suddenly Lydia said, Why did you suddenly decide to come here? You have something to do with us. How rude. Do friends need an excuse to meet? The stranger replied. Staring at Jean, she shouted, So you're the rumored half-blood goblin? Nice to meet you. My name's Allison. I'm a friend of Lydia's from when we were kids. Unlike Lydia, Allison thought the genie seemed quite pleasant friendly. So he introduced himself to her in return, looking at Allison. Jean couldn't figure out what it was about her that attracted him so much. Allison said, Since you've captured the outcast, I've come in place of the old man to give you the reward. I'm not poor, thank you. Give it all to the genie. He knocked out the fire dog all by himself. He's got enough skills, Lydia replied. Or a dream she knew all too well by now. After all, she had watched him fight from the beginning. She couldn't believe that not so long ago he had been a simple man. Allison was even convinced that Jean would be a good competition for Lydia during the festival. However, Lydia herself thought that Jin would be killed as soon as he stepped into the arena. Of course, at this level, Lydia can defeat Jin. But if he learns to control his goblin powers, he could really become the new king. Well, it's time to get your reward. As an exception, Allison will let the genie pick it out himself. Our hero faced a very difficult choice. Return home now or become stronger as a yukai. The choice was clear. Jean came home, and the first thing he did was call his friend to ask him for a small favor. The only thing Gina told his friend was that he would soon be gone for a month and asked him to tell his mom that he was going to boot camp. The thing is, his best friend's family took over a martial arts training camp in Andon. Despite the absurdity of the request, he couldn't leave a friend in distress. The only thing his best friend asked of him was if something terrible happened to the genie to tell him. Jin wanted to tell him the truth. He really did. But if he did, he'd be breaking spirit law. And that would not only punish him, but Allison as well. Now that the excuse for mom had been made, it was time to go back to practice. At least Lydia and Allison thought Jean would make that choice. And frankly, he wanted to do that. He thought long and hard about what to choose and finally said, I'll wait and come home in a month after I pass the test. The girls weren't surprised by that answer, but they didn't even realize he'd be staying here. Jin knew very well that if he quit training now and went home, there would be worse things to happen than not being able to go home. And after the fight with the outcast, he's only convinced of that. So he needs strength to deal with what might happen. That's why Jin chose the opportunity to become stronger as a yukai. Allison was thrilled with that answer. She thought Jin was some kind of superhuman, but on Lydia's face there was genuine anger. Suddenly she said, are you having fun? You're teasing a child by offering him a non-existent choice, and you should know how not to give in to such provocations. This psycho has a bad habit. She's always asking election questions and watching for reactions. Lydia added, It's called a test. It helps you get to know the character and thinking of the person you are talking to. By asking questions like that, people get to know each other better. At least that's what Allison thought. Of course, the way she talks and the vibe coming from her is unlike the other yukai. It's like Jin is looking at a woman her own age. After a few seconds of awkward silence, Allison asked Lydia if she could borrow Jean for a bit. To be honest, she'd planned to talk to him from the beginning, as soon as she saw his abilities. Without a word, Allison started the transformation again. To be honest, 
Jin's transformation magic was the most impressive of all. The idea of something that looks like a human being turning into an animal in a matter of seconds. Allison is a yukai who is allowed to go out into the human world. Once every six months, for one day, and on the condition of being fully responsible for all consequences, she can take someone with her who has not yet passed the test. And this time that lucky guy was Jean, having finished talking to his friend. Jean offered to buy Allison dinner, to thank her for taking him into the human world. Allison shouted with eyes full of joy, You won't believe this, I really wanted to try something. From the first time I visited the human world, I always wanted to taste it. But the chance never came, among the millions of different cuisines of all countries. Or my son wanted to try it. Home-cooked food. The kind that people eat and cook every day. Because she thought it was food filled with love. Despite the large number of dishes, they were all very simple. Because Jin cooked with what was left in the refrigerator. But even so, Allison was thrilled. Suddenly, she said, I had to eat the same fast food and cafeteria food every time. A look of genuine surprise appeared on Jean's face, seeing the look on his face. Allison told me that she went to Hoyon High School. By coincidence, it was right next door to Jin's school. And now it all worked out. Jean couldn't figure out what was wrong with her character. She just wanted to make friends. Even though Allison was very thin, she had no problem eating everything Jean had prepared. After finishing dinner, Allison decided it was time to give the genie his reward for defeating the outcast. It's a preservation scroll. Not exactly an exact comparison, but it's like a bag and a phone, two in one. Jean can summon it at any time to choose what he wants to use. You have to swipe it like a smartphone screen. When suddenly, Allison pulled a box out of a scroll. It is a kind of inventory of the yukai. With this box, Jin can store items and carry any things without thinking about their weight and size. In addition to that, the scroll has many other functions. Gina has yet to be introduced to them. The scroll in the middle. This is the scroll of preservation. The coins on the left are called ghost faces. They're very valuable in the yokai world. Jin received 40 of them. It was a considerable sum of money. To be used wisely. And finally, the object on the right is one of the ghost treasures bestowed upon the genie. Such objects accumulate spiritual power and have special abilities. People often make legends about them. Usually, the reward for catching an outcast is just money. Since the old Mangte man had decided to take care of the necessities, he must have expected a lot from Jin. Of course, though not to the same extent as humans, Yukai are also attached to their homelands. And if one of the spirits of the Korean peninsula became the new king, it would be something to be proud of. In addition, Allison had heard that at the last festival, their challenger had made it to the finals, where he had lost. It is said that the yokai of Korea fought to the end. Their battle with the current king was the most brutal in history. But what's more interesting is that that yukai was also a goblin. Not only at that time, but throughout history, Korean goblins were a force to be reckoned with. It was all too wild for the genie. He hadn't even known he was a goblin until yesterday. To be honest, he didn't even know how it had happened. And everything seems like a dream where he's just stuck and can't wake up. But even so, in one day, he has adapted to his new life quite well. When Allison said, Even the first time we met, you managed to impress me. And since you're determined to become a stronger yokai, why don't you set the bar higher? Allison, once again, told us what would happen if a new king came to the throne. But the extermination of the people could be avoided, if the new king is Jin. When suddenly Jin said, I have a question about the scroll next to you. There's been an inscription flashing on it for some time now. It's an alarm. It is sent out by Yokomi in the neighborhood in case of an emergency. If an alarm signal reaches her Kaya in the world of men, it can mean only one thing. One of them has broken the law and harmed a person. This kind of thing hasn't happened in decades, so it's probably a false alarm. Except Allison forgot that alarms can't be false when she remembered this unquestioned rule. Allison was horrified, and Jean with her. While Allison dealt with the emergency, Jean decided to have a little practice with the new scroll. Pulling out an item from his inventory, left behind by the elder, Jin didn't understand if it was a weapon or armor. And in the meantime, it was 9.56 p.m. Well before they went on the challenge, Allison said they had to be back in the spirit world by 10 o'clock at night. That means they have exactly four minutes before the deadline. Jean waited, but the clock was already showing 11 o'clock in the evening. Jin was beginning to worry that something had happened to Ellis, when suddenly our hero came across an old picture of his father, and then he thought that if he had goblin blood in him, he must have inherited her father's, and then he remembered the old man's words. 
who said that his blood was only slightly diluted. Jin had absolutely no doubt that the previous claimant to the yokai throne from Kor was his father, but whether or not he knew of his origins remained a mystery. But to find out the answer to that question, he has to save Allison. Meanwhile, in one of the alleys, a yokai attacked a man, before killing a lot of innocent people. Of course, Allison was quick to point out where the spirit belongs. But the problem is, he's not the first. Many dissatisfied with the law of the current king decided that since the end of his reign was only a month away, they could violate his laws and remain unpunished. But in the human world, killing a spirit isn't easy, even if you're the greatest yukai. But even so, ordinary monsters are unable to stand up to Allison. And then, when all the spirits seemed to have been slain, the mighty yukai appeared. Even with that level of strength, there's no way Allison can stand up to him. When suddenly this yukai took the form of a man and said, Be on your guard and keep your cool. If word gets out that you've fallen victim to such a small thing, our clan will no longer be able to go out in public with our heads held high. Luckily, the yokai turned out to be Allison's brother, even though they don't have the warmest relationship. But he still came to his sister's aid in her time of need. Allison's brother's name was Isaac. Even among the most powerful spirits, he's considered incredibly strong. One of the reasons he's considered so powerful is his magic of suggestion. He can make anyone believe anything. In other words, he has the power of hypnosis, but it's not an inborn ability, and to learn it requires certain skills. So Isaac is an incredibly talented spirit, but like all geniuses should be, he's incredibly arrogant, and he thinks he's better than everyone else. In total, 24 spirits entered the world of men. Only among them there was not a single one who was worthy of being called a yokai. And judging by the chains on each of them, they're being controlled by someone, and they weren't acting on their own. Allison counted seven people killed by them and over 15 wounded. But who would want to do this, and why remains a big mystery? Allison said, Sure, he knows exactly how serious a crime he's committing. What kind of person would have to be to take pleasure in such carnage? But Isaac disagreed with what she said. He thought the yukai who controlled the spirits were killing for profit, not for fun. There was a very old story, unknown to their generation. Since ancient times, the yokai had hunted humans, but not for sadism or to satisfy their hunger. The yokai devoured human flesh and blood. Because to the yokai, humans are an incredibly powerful source of spiritual energy. One person can give such an amount of energy that no spirit can give. Allison is horrified by what she's hearing. After all, she had never heard of such a thing before. But it had once been common knowledge. Allison, if every yukai knew about this, do you think the human world would be so peaceful? Isaac asked. Allison had passed the qualification test. So she should know better than most that among young yukai like them, even those over 500 years old, there are few willing to put that much effort into just getting into the human world. Of course, other than weirdos like Allison and Isaac, there's nothing to do in this boring and dull place for yokai as long as the law stays in place. That's how their generation sees the human world. But let's not forget that the festival is coming up. And everyone is desperately clinging to every opportunity to become stronger. Some yukai who know this are willing to risk everything for power. Helping the old man Allison herself had seen a lot of yukai go crazy lately, going too far in their quest for power. It wasn't their motive that raised more questions, but their method. Isaac admitted that he wouldn't have made so much noise if he were in their place. Instead of drawing attention to himself by spawning a bunch of evil spirits who couldn't act stealthily, he would pull it off personally, quickly and decisively capturing people one by one before eating them. Although. If their enemy is able to summon hundreds of spirits, then perhaps he thought it would be safer to use them to capture people rather than act on his own. Jean was still at home at the time, when someone broke into his house, when suddenly the stranger whispered, How simple. If I had known how defenseless he was, I wouldn't have wasted so much energy. But Jin was able to smell the danger in time you return from this attack, and he didn't want to leave his attacker unpunished. Now it was time to unleash all his magic power. Lightning bolt to Sears! This is the same spell that Jin used against the fire dog, but this time he was able to do it purposefully, before Jin was attacked. He felt his heart begin to beat at a frantic rate. It would be wrong to call it an ability. Rather, it's one of the goblin's hallmarks. Even the weakest and most inexperienced goblins can't be taken to the same trick twice. That time, right before the fire dog attacked, Jin was seized with a chilling terror. If he hadn't remembered it, he wouldn't have had a chance to dodge the surprise attack. By the way, Jin instinctively threw the attacker down without thinking about hurting anyone. But when the dust settled, 
Jin saw that the place where he'd dropped the spirit was empty, when suddenly a tail of snake scales was tied around Jin's neck, and a voice from the darkness said, Don't worry about the people. If they suddenly panicked, it wouldn't be easy for me to deal with the consequences. Speaking of which, are you really a goblin? You have very little energy, and you don't hit very well, added the spirit. But the goblins should never be underestimated. They were considered the strongest spirits of all, for a reason. But from the looks of it, this spirit is many times greater than the current strength of the genie. It may even be stronger than a trained goblin. The genie was facing a human attacking Ikai. He's the one behind all those spirits Allison and Isaac were fighting. Realizing the complete superiority of his opponent, Jin didn't even think of giving up. In this situation, he saw the perfect opportunity to become stronger. However, Jin felt he had come face to face with an incredibly dangerous creature. Jin would be lucky if he could survive let alone win, when suddenly the serpent said, You may be a goblin, but there is a gulf in power between us. Resistance will only bring you a painful death. If the outcome will not change, is it not better to escape suffering? Plus, I can promise to spare your mother and let her live in peace. That's not a bad offer, is it? But Jin wouldn't even listen to him. He decided to act. With such a quick and unexpected attack, our hero managed to hit the snake. But unlike the others, he was still on his feet. But that wasn't the worst part. After Jin hit him, he felt his whole body start to stiffen like a statue. The reason was the serpent's unique technique, Mastery of Venom. This technique is quite powerful, but physical contact is required to use it. This technique is completely useless against a yukai stronger than the host. But even in a confrontation with a genie, the serpent had to provoke him to touch it. They say a yak with purer blood can immobilize an opponent with a single glance, when suddenly the serpent says, oh, You miserable half-breed. If you'd known how to use that thing on your arm, things might have gone differently. But misfortune always comes unexpectedly. Remember this simple truth. I hope it will come in handy in your next life added the serpent. Despite the power of the technique, Jin wasn't completely immobilized. He was only trying to conserve his energy. But he had enough energy for one attack. He just has to find the right moment to do it. After all, it's only one shot. And when are snakes most vulnerable? That's right, when they're eating. So Jin waited for the moment when the serpent would get close enough to see him and struck with lightning speed. Using what little spiritual energy he had left. It could have killed the snake had Jin hit it. But unfortunately, the snake's agility was far greater than he expected. Even though the poison has already spread throughout his body, Jin is still clinging to life. Even a weak goblin is still a goblin. Don't forget that. When suddenly, the serpent's body was struck by two wooden swords. The evil spirit didn't understand where they came from. After all, these daggers belonged to the exorcist clan. When suddenly, out of the darkness, a masked man came out of the darkness and said in a whisper, the thunderous voice of the Nine Heavens. Now that's interesting. Why would a yokai unknown to the Ganon come to his rescue? It seems to be even stronger than the serpent. This guy was incredibly strong and confident, and his aura was so strong that it was visible to the naked eye. The serpent's chatter bought him some time, but not enough to escape. Moreover, the serpent realized that this guy was very dangerous. After all, his aura was completely different from ordinary shamans. His victory was out of the question. He realized that if he stayed here too long, it could cost him his life. And nearby, Allison and Isaac are dealing with evil spirits. And if they come to the aid of the masked stranger, he won't survive. Bleeding Snake screamed, Screw it! I wanted to save this for the festival. Among all evil spirits, he freed from the most brutal and cold-blooded monster. In his lifetime, he wreaked havoc across the Western world. It is not known when or under what circumstances he died. But during his lifetime, this spirit was of the level of a deity. Summoning the demon, the serpent said with a wry smile. For a show-off like you, he's quite the opponent. And I, with your permission, will finally eat, added the serpent. Meanwhile, the evil spirit he summoned has begun creating a ghost bomb. This is the basic attack spell of all evil spirits, but its power depends directly on the spirit's strength. But even so, the masked stranger decided to attack the spirit. Amazingly, the stranger was only able to repel the ghost bomb with a single swing of his sword. But it was far from over. With a second swing, he finished off the spirit himself. Who was he? Whoever he is, he's extremely powerful. Only a few will be able to fend off the strongest dark spirit and then kill it. So on top of everything else, he also killed a snake. After finishing off the evil yokai, the stranger went to the genie and said, Looks like you and this guy are on opposite sides of the barricade. 
If you want to keep your life, you'd better answer the questions honestly, without any secrets. From the last of his strength, Jin said, What are you doing here? Still can't believe I can really hear your voice. Wait, does Jin know who's behind that mask? Feeling perplexed, Jin started laughing like crazy said, Well, of course you didn't recognize me. But do you really not recognize my voice? And then this guy decided to take off his mask. Whoa! The masked stranger, that's Jean's best friend. Derek, I can't believe he's a yokai too. Derek wasn't just shocked, he was truly terrified. Because his best friend was on the verge of death. What's more, the cattle couldn't figure out how Jin's could stand up to that snake. Especially since it was not an unusual poison, but a magical one. Drugs from the medicine cabinet couldn't do such a thing. But the genie didn't need any help. All he needed was a few minutes for his body to heal itself. While Derek and Jean were exchanging pleasantries, the snake managed to escape. There was an awkward pause between them. Jin suddenly said, Hey, are you okay? But Derek was totally depressed. All because he'd lost the snake. But what depressed him more was that his best friend, the one he'd been friends with all his life, was a half-blood yokai. And what's more, a half-blood goblin. His exorcist clan was already criticized for short-sightedness, and now he'd lost sight of the half-blood goblin. When all of a sudden, Jean said, Derek, listen, you never told me what kind of training you do at home. The duty of the exorcist clan is to train to exterminate supernatural beings. That's why Derek never invited the genie to visit. And then Jin asked with great care, So it's not uncommon for yokai to come into our world and harm people? But before, this sort of thing happened quite rarely. As he suddenly said, if the spirits were fighting amongst themselves, I wouldn't care. But unfortunately, in the last hundred years, they have made several attempts on human life. Recently, however, the course of things has changed dramatically. For the yokai people are the real chits. And those who want to become the new king are ready to cut the line. Now they don't just absorb part of a person's energy. They devour them whole. A month ago, the number of missing people began to skyrocket, especially in densely populated areas. Even though there's no direct evidence that the yokai were involved, in most cases, homes were partially destroyed and covered in blood. That's why the Derek clan and he in particular decided to look into the matter. And as it turns out, for good reason. When suddenly, right out of the sky, Allison landed. And with tears in her eyes, she said, Jean, are you alright? Are you hurt anywhere? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I fell for such a childish trick. When suddenly Derek drew his sword and pointed it at Allison and said, Stop talking. Don't you come any closer, yokai. One more step in that direction, and I will kill you without a second thought. You have to admit it's amazing how responsible you are. Jean tried to talk Derek out of this terrible idea, but still Derek kept his sword up and his eyes on Allison. And then he said, I believe she knows the concept of law. That's why I warned her instead of attacking her. Jin, don't you realize that this is all because of you? They told you that you would be able to visit the human world freely if you waited for the exam, didn't they? Idiot, do you even know what that means? These creatures are monsters. They may look like humans and have different personalities, but their true nature is still the same. They're willing to devour their brothers for power. It doesn't matter what's in your blood. You're still human, and this world is your home, and you don't need their permission to be here. They kidnapped you and now they have the nerve to say you have to become a monster to get home. What a load of crap. Whatever happens, I'm not leaving you. Allison understood exactly what we were talking about. She also knew she was in a desperate situation. And Jin's name is already on the registry. And now he's a resident of the yokai world, no one's opinion matters. If you put emotion aside and look at the facts, this kind of rule-breaking will not end well. Not for the genie or his friend. And that's when Allison decided she needed to address the issue before it became a problem. The only true solution at that point seemed to be to run away. One look at Derek's aura, and it's obvious how powerful a shaman he is. But still, to get the situation off the ground, especially since the old man has appointed Allison as Jin's guardian, so she must take him with her to the spirit world. When suddenly, Jin punched his best friend as hard as he could. He knew he could easily kill Allison. Of course he wasn't going to kill him. Jin realized that Derek was only doing it because he wanted to help. But Derek didn't fully know what the coming danger to humanity was. And only Jin could stop it. Derek at first thought his friend was being controlled by hypnosis. When suddenly Jin said, I don't know about bloodlust. I don't know about bloodlust, but I can't deny that the Yakai devour their own kin, because I just ate one myself. When Derek heard that, he was truly horrified. I can't tell if it's true or not. 
though I've been told he's already lost the right to be called a yukai. But either way, I killed a living creature to protect myself and my family, Jin added. And it wasn't his plan to stop. He doesn't want to hurt people, but he'll continue to eat the yokai if it'll make him stronger. He'll have to risk his life to do it. Surprisingly, Derek knew what Jean was talking about. Well, convincing him that he didn't have to go that far. But the genie was firm in his decisions. And then, with a heavy smile on his face, he said, Derek, I'm not asking you to accept my decision. I'm only asking that you don't turn your back on me. But my goal is to become king of the yokai. Derek was ready to hear anything, but not this. Realizing that his best friend wanted to be king of the people he was exterminating. Screamed in horror, You idiot! Do you even know what a yokai king is? And what kind of nonsense are you talking? But honestly, Jin had no idea what it meant to be a spirit king. The only thing our hero realized was that he had a chance that he had to take. Unless he had to drown in rivers of blood. Maybe he'll succeed, maybe he won't. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Jin prefers to make his own destiny, not sit around waiting for a predetermined future. After listening to his best friend's position, Derek thought and said, You can be human, or you can be a yokai. If your intentions are pure, you don't have to justify yourself to me. However, if Jean ever crossed the line, Derek promised he wouldn't hesitate to kill him. As strange as it may sound, but it was fair. Figure it out, it's time to say goodbye. Before leaving, Derek asked what the young guard's name was. In a hesitant voice, the girl introduced herself as a yokai envoy to the Korean peninsula, named Allison. I apologize for wading into the woods into the internal affairs of the yokai, but I've heard that even you have laws you have to follow. If anyone dares to break them by hurting this guy or killing him, then I'll use my powers as shaman of the Star Hall to slaughter the guilty without mercy. Derek was serious, even though he and Jin are on opposite sides of the divide. He believes him. Derek promised to keep an eye on Jean's mom while he was in the spirit world. Allison was shaking with fear. It was the first time she'd ever met a shaman in person. She thought they'd never get away alive. Suddenly a voice from the darkness said, Sister, don't worry. The shaman is not like the others, having no idea of the strength of his opponent, not knowing even their numbers, just rushed into the thick of things. Emerging from the darkness, said Isaac, as much as Allison didn't want to, but she accepted the fact that if her opponent had been a little stronger, she would have been killed. Looking at Jin, Isaac said with surprise, So you are that half-goblin? The yokai, who are descended from animals, are called beast demons. Most of them are tied to the appearance instincts of their common ancestor. As they grow stronger, they not only gain the ability to reincarnate as humans, but also their true appearance becomes less and less like their ancestor. Such yokai or all their family members are called ghost beasts. And on a higher level, there are beings who have surpassed their ancestors. In the past, they were called divine doors. They were once worshipped equally by the yokai people. When suddenly Isaac extends his hand to the genie and says, I am the head of the Black Turtle Clan. If you really want to become king, you'll have to fight me at the festival. Though Isaac seemed quite friendly to the genie. But his sudden change of demeanor made him uneasy. A moment before Jin and Isaac's hands touched, Allison shouted, Stop! Don't shake his hand! Jin was utterly perplexed, but decided to listen to his guard nonetheless. Within seconds, the girl was consumed by real anger, and she screamed, Isaac, don't even think about it! He was having the best day of his life, but the guy only laughed back. Grabbing Jean's hand, Isaac laughed. The whole situation seemed funny to him. He didn't understand how a half-goblin could so confidently declare that he would become king of the yokai. Blowing blood from his finger, Isaac activated the secret magic of the yokai an ancient teleportation technique, the head of the Black Turtle Clan, took them to a beautiful valley with a huge lake. Isaac was pleasantly surprised. After the first and also sudden teleportation, Jin was able to stay on his feet. As a friend, Jin said, don't tell me you want to eat me too. That was the most likely scenario. However, before they start fighting, Isaac wants to ask him a few questions. This whole situation seemed very strange to Jin. The first thing he asked, does the genie play computer games? This question surprised him, for the spirit had nothing to do with computers. Seeing nothing wrong with that, Jean replied that he used to play on the computer a lot in middle school, but hadn't played anything since he moved to high school. And then Isaac asked what genre of games Jean liked best. Our hero liked action RPGs, online games he did not like. After all, 
In them there is a constant feeling that the one who paid more wins. When he knew everything he wanted to know, Isaac shouted, Excellent! We'll have something to do! As suddenly a huge torrent of icy air burst out of the ground. Jean had absolutely no doubt that Isaac had done it, and a huge ice spike rose from the bottom of the lake. Apparently ice was the main genome of Isaac, and from the looks of it, he was serious. Though he had seemed friendly at first, things would probably have turned out differently if the Jin hadn't claimed the throne of King. Jin dodged all the ice spikes in a matter of seconds, and Isaac was amazed at Jin's speed. Even though the enemy outmatches the genie in strength and magic, he doesn't try to dodge or escape. On the contrary, he aims at him, waiting for the moment when he cannot return. Jean had already firmly decided to himself that Isaac was his target, and he must destroy him. His perception and his talent for battle cannot be overemphasized. But right now, it's his ability to learn that shines brightest. Today, he had already encountered the fighting style that Isaac was displaying. The decision he's made is the quintessence of all the experience of the day. Just as the wise man said the first time we met, goblins only need to do or see something once to learn it. And the shabby armband is a hidden treasure of the yukai, unleashing the power and energy of the user. And another lesson, even if it looks like the attack worked, it's never a good idea to relax early. Jin could feel all the energy he had absorbed. He felt the energy he'd absorbed, but he seemed to have figured out how to use it. The energy coursing through his body gave him goosebumps, and it started in his lower abdomen. His personal feeling was that there was a little more than half of it left, about 60%. 10% he spent on a huge lightning beam, then several smaller beams, each took about 3%, and if his energy reserves reached zero, he would fall back into a state of exhaustion. Realizing this, Jin decided to control his energy expenditure. Thanks to the Ice Ball's protective spell, Isaac didn't have a single scratch on him. Suddenly, he said, Amazing. I didn't think I'd have to summon an icicle almost immediately. Did I really underestimate you that much? The first one was over in a matter of seconds. After listening to Isaac, our hero said, Damn your weird way of speaking. Well, are you really trying to eat me? I don't know how to explain it, but I don't feel threatened by you, Jean added. Well, Isaac's bloodlust fake didn't work. The thing was, he had no personal grudge against Jim, nor did he want to absorb his power. He was just hurt by Jin's words. But Isaac, it's not that Jin wants to be king of the yokai. It's that he wants to become one without knowing what responsibility he's taking on. Jin, I thought the king of the yokai was just like a human king, sitting on the throne, just making laws, Isaac said. Didn't it strike you as odd that the election of a new king comes down to a regular massacre? And why is it every 666 years? The yokai follow this ridiculous tradition because it's their unbreakable covenant. The yokai are creatures that are loyal to their instincts. The mere fact that someone powerful has established his own rules in our world is not enough to blindly follow them. If things were as Jin imagined, there would be no end to the slaughter and devouring of each other. And to avoid that, the ancient yokai created a failsafe in the form of a king. Because of the nature of the yokai, one day they will inevitably fall prey to their own desires. To prevent such an exodus, all agreed that they needed a fuse. A being who demands the obedience of all the yokai of the world, which in return ensures their survival. That's what a yokai king is. Fortunately, over the millennia, all subsequent kings have managed to keep the world stable without major incidents. With one exception, the current king. Imagine if human governments one day issued an edict forbidding humans from eating meat no matter what the circumstances. There would obviously be a storm of protests. And if the law hadn't been repealed, the protests wouldn't have been the end of it. And the yokai have been living with this rule for a long time. If you put it in that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense why the yokai care so much about their king and the sacrifices they are willing to make to protect this ancient tradition. The closer the current king comes to the end of his reign, the less patience they have. If the next king extends the law. It is unlikely that the yokai will be willing to continue to follow it as before. The new king may be the strongest yukai, but, in the end, if the absolute majority opposes it, there is little he can do about it. And if it comes to that, it could end in more than just the overthrow of the current king. The very need for a king will be called into question, and on that day, his power will be history. That's why Jin's words that he will become the new king and prolong the law hurt Isaac so much. The younger ones will grin and go on, but the old men will tear him to pieces. But he realized who had given him that hope. Isaac thought Allison was different from the other yukai. 
The only problem was that she hadn't seen the world yet, and she was too quick to get attached to new acquaintances. In other words, Isaac teleported Jin here to give up his idea of becoming the new king. Isaac originally thought Jean was a bug he could just squash, but now his opinion had improved somewhat. Well, the best part is, Isaac offered to let Jin work for him. And if he helps him become king of the yokai, Isaac will let Jin rule the Korean peninsula. All in all, it seemed like a pretty good deal. Of course, Jin wouldn't be able to keep people away from the spirit completely, but his family would certainly be safe. When suddenly, Jin said, Let me ask you, how strong are you? What are the chances of you becoming the new king? It can't be said that Isaac was the strongest spirit in Korea, but he has a good chance of becoming the new king. After all, there is an age limit for the contestants. After thinking for a couple minutes, Jin holds out his hand and says, If it will help me protect my loved ones, then I accept your offer. And the language was incredible. I was glad of that. I knew that if he had the last of the remaining goblins as allies, he would win for sure. As soon as their hands touched, Jean electrocuted him, immobilizing him. His words are not credible, and Isaac was the first to offer him a handshake, deceiving him and attacking him immediately. Compared to the power Jin had displayed earlier, this magic was on a completely different level. 60% of the energy he had left. He put every last drop of it into this attack. Not an instinct, but a technique he first used consciously. Combining lightning magic and wrestling moves, Jean created a new technique called the Lightning Mountain Throw. Thus, leaving all doubts behind, there was determination and courage inside him now. And when he learned his true destiny as king of the yokai, he was determined to become king at any cost. And if anyone dared to disobey, he would kill the rebels. Because of the mountain's lightning bolt, Jin's energy was at zero. The trembling in his body only began to intensify. That's exactly how he felt the last time he lost control. Stamina regeneration and wound healing. For a genie who has put everything he has into the strike, it will be unavailable for a while. With his energy reserves completely depleted, Jin is no longer able to continue the fight. But now he's trying his best to maintain control. What he didn't consider, however, was the full potential of his opponent. He possesses the unique magic of the North Pole, which allows you to manipulate water and freeze it in a certain radius around you. This magic can be used for both offense and defense. Ordinary yukai should have died from lack of energy. However, Jin was still holding on. At the last gasp, he said, I'm sure you're surprised. Since I started the fight ready to kill and eat you, I'm ready for my own death. But that doesn't mean I'm going to let myself be killed so easily. If you expect me to beg for mercy, it's a little early for that. Even though Jin can't use magic anymore, but he still has his fists. That just keeps getting brighter and brighter. What is it? An intention to catch the opponent in a mistake and take advantage of his weaknesses? Or perhaps it is the goblin's spirit awakening without his knowledge? Anyway, that's a pretty big word for him, considering he can barely stand. Patting Jean on the shoulder, Isaac smiled and said with full friendliness in his voice, And you're good. As I expected, you didn't disappoint me once until the very end. The enthusiasm that was running through your head even started to feel natural, Isaac added. Jean asked what it all meant. Isaac's smile turned into a wild laughter, and then he said, Well, whether you're worth rooting for or not. I mean, what's the point of rooting for someone who has no chance of becoming king? Jin was even more confused. Isaac had just told him why he shouldn't become king of the yokai. The thing is, Isaac wasn't into killing people, and the thought of a knight of yokai terrified him. From an early age, he disliked the hustle and bustle of the spirit world. He didn't understand the senseless fighting killing, and the attitude of others. As if it was just the way things were supposed to be. Compared to the spirit world, the human world is a much quieter and more peaceful place. The human world was a quieter, calmer place than the spirit world. But at least here Isaac could choose what he liked. But most of all, he liked that people knew how to enjoy leisure and idleness. Comics, games, movies, and other useless things in the world and yokai are not to be found. But spirits prefer to devour humans. And if the world changes so much that people can no longer create them, it will be a real tragedy for Isaac. Apparently a fair number of yokai share Isaac's and Allison's views, so the Janin will have a lot of support anyway. As suddenly, Isaac said, This time, Korea has the highest chance of victory, but there is one very annoying problem in becoming the new king. Including me, all the festival favorites come from famous families with rich lineage. Their strength, we inherited this ancestry. 
but more importantly we have optimized an ancestral techniques handed down to us by our ancestors to use ancient magic. Even if the two techniques are equally powerful, the one who has inherited the results of thousands of years of trial and error will inevitably be stronger. In general, the older your lineage, the stronger you'll be regardless of technique. To use a human analogy, it's like being born into a very wealthy family. In other words, followers of an ancient race forced to live in perpetual training in order to strengthen their already powerful techniques. And if a child is born with any talent, the whole clan tells him day and night that he must become the new king, and no one cares what he wants. That's the situation Isaac finds himself in. And if a talented yukai refuses the clan's idea, he'll be stripped of his head, or expelled from the clan. He's not human, but having his whole family as enemies is extremely cruel. None of the above has anything to do with Jean. With such a strong lineage and serious talent, he is not bound by family or clan ties. But most importantly, he has the motive and desire to become king, which is why Isaac decided to support the genie in this difficult struggle for the throne. Having a yukai like Isaac as an ally is an advantage. But things have been happening too fast lately, and the genie needs a little time to realize it. Surprisingly, Isaac was very understanding. Apparently, he really is a good guy. When suddenly, out of the sky, Allison came at him. Apparently, she takes her role as guardian too seriously. But, on the other hand, if something happens to the genie, she'd have to answer to a wise man. Of course, the good thing to do is to sort things out first, before you attack your brother. Jean asking her to stop, but she wouldn't listen to him. But Allison assured me that this attack didn't even scratch him. As suddenly the girl said, Know him? He's probably already disappeared, anticipating the reprimand I'm about to give him. Isaac, that guy you saw isn't real. To make a long story short, he has a split personality, Allison added. According to legends, the black turtle was born from the union of a snake and a turtle, which became one. However, if you trace their origins, the ancestor is the commonest turtle. But once upon a time long ago, some genius recognized the power of yin and yang. Soon he separated them from his inner energy, then divided yin and yang amongst themselves, leaving only the purest yin. Thus, he overcame his own limit by awakening divine power. This was the birth of the first black turtle. All of his descendants have inherited his power in some way, but to become a full-fledged black turtle. They had to undergo incredibly painful training, and some sort of side effect for them was a snake. The second person Jean saw. Isaac seemed like a good guy, even though he'd been different from the beginning. You can't call Isaac a villain. The only problem is that he does things first and thinks later. He's also extremely impulsive and selfish, and his antics are causing Allison a lot of headaches. Isaac is essentially a snake of concentrated negative energy. Maybe that's why he has such a calm and cold-blooded character. However, he is completely subservient to his true turtle personality. In this duo, strategizing and planning were to rest on the snake's shoulders. But in Isaac's case, there was something wrong with his snake from the beginning. For some reason it can arbitrarily take control of his body which gets him in trouble a lot. And for the same reason, there was a lot of opposition to his candidacy as the clan's representative at the festival. And those who did not like him nicknamed him Skullcracker. Anyway, Allison and Jean have been in the human world for a long time. It's time for them to go back. Before he left, Jean was overcome with sadness. When she saw it, she told him not to worry about being late. After all, she would take care of all the problems herself. But Jean admitted that it didn't bother him at all. He was more concerned about the state of their balcony than anything else. After all, he'll be gone for a month, and if my mom sees the balcony in such a state she will be very worried. When suddenly, a wise man came out of the kitchen and told Jean not to worry about it. After all, there's a special perfume for such occasions. The elder ordered Allison to go to the spirit world alone, and then the old man said, The three of us have something to discuss. I know it's not very polite to visit so suddenly, but please love and welcome. When suddenly, out of nowhere, Lydia appeared. Apparently the old man was so fed up with her that he decided to take her to the human world, though from the look on her face, she clearly didn't want to be here. Then why did the wise man bring her here? When, with only the three of them left, the sage said, It's time to explain. First of all, let me tell you what happened this evening. Just after sunset, about fifty ghosts appeared in Seoul's Socho neighborhood. Someone was controlling them, and they were attacking people. When the yokai went to deal with them, it was clear that the ghosts had acted very roughly, not even trying to cover their tracks. I thought the stunt had been organized to distract Allison, so they could get to Jin, 
That's where I was right. But that wasn't their only goal. About 200 people went missing in Seoul this evening. This number is derived from the report sent to the police. The real number of missing persons is at least 500. And it turns out that behind this plan are smaller and more than a few yokai acting in concert. I've already compiled a list of suspects, most of them Korean residents, and it won't be hard to catch them. However, some of the evidence from the places I've visited leads me to some unfortunate thoughts. Many yokai from other regions have come to the Korean peninsula. They know that if they do their business in their home country, they will be caught quickly. So they started kidnapping people in Korea, where it's harder to trace them. Basically, if we don't capture the criminals, they'll be hunting for six months before the festival. Anyway, what I've called you here for is a qualifying exam that's due in a month. We could do it in a slightly different format right now, to find and destroy the criminals who invaded Korea. That's the task before you. The next morning, as all school children should, Derek went to class. But the night before, he couldn't sleep. He kept thinking about that meeting with Jean. As time went on, he began to wonder if he'd done the right thing. And if his best friend didn't come back, the blame for his death would be entirely on him. At least he thought so. Suddenly he met Jean on the way. Our hero said as if nothing had happened. Your phone was off, but I knew I'd meet you on the way to school. A lot has changed since we talked yesterday. By going to their favorite coffee shop, Jin told me everything that had happened that night, and even about the yokai from the other lands. Jin was sure the deal wasn't so bad, at least because he wouldn't have to go to the spirit world. Well, Derek thought the whole thing was completely absurd. Suddenly he asked, Jin, do you even know what class of yokai you belong to? But since Jin only found out about the existence of the yokai the day before yesterday, he hadn't had time to figure it all out yet. And then Derek whispered, Shin Ryongki Gwai Su. It's not just one word. Each of the five syllables denotes the status of yokai. The lowest class is called Su, better known as beasts. Most yokai fall into this class. They may be dangerous, but to someone like Derek, they're nothing. Not much different from wild animals. Their strength is numerical advantage. Ordinary humans are quite capable of dealing with this kind of spirits. There have been many such documented cases in the past. The situation is different with the higher class yokai. They are no longer manageable for the average person. A goo or monster. It's a yokai that's as strong as a hundred men. And by hundreds of people, we mean their combined physical strength. So in reality, even if thousands of people attack him, they'll only die. Upon learning this, Jin asked Derek, if these two classes are the lowest, what are the yokai of the other three classes? The exact answer, Derek didn't know. He'd never met them, but he knew one thing for sure, that they would bring disaster with them. However, the ancient scriptures said that the Qi class was about ten times stronger than the Gui class. If all these yokai were given a free hand, they could turn this town into a branch of hell on earth overnight. There's an unspoken rule in the exorcist clan. If someone encounters a Shin class or Ryan class yukai, run away as fast as possible, although it's never happened once in the history of the clan. Derek told all this to the genie just so he wouldn't participate in the hunt alone. I realize Gina's not likely to give up the hunt. He said, If anything goes wrong, call me right away. After learning that there were five classes of yukai, Jin asked the Derek, what class was the yukai that took the form of a serpent? According to Derek, that yokai is definitely stronger than Su, but not as strong as Kai, so he's an average gay. What was stranger was that Derek felt a more powerful energy from the ghost he was controlling. If the serpent could realize half of the ghost's potential, they wouldn't both be dead by now. And by the way, the yokai used the ghost to distract my attention. If I hadn't read his intent at once, you would have been consumed by it, Derek added. Jin's current class, even lower than the serpent's. In short, at best, an average, if not weak, gu. And it doesn't matter that Jin has goblin blood in his veins, and his potential is limitless. He shouldn't get involved in a mess he can't get out of, even though Derek was being mean to his best friend. He just had to bury his idea of joining the hunt right here and now. As suddenly Jin jumped up and said with complete confidence in his eyes, If I fight him again right now, I'll definitely be able to kill him. Like you said, without your help, I would have died there before I could do anything. But it's different now. I've learned how to use my power properly. I also feel more confident in combat, Jin added. Realizing that Jean had drawn absolutely no conclusions from yesterday, Derek felt it his duty to get his point across. Chamsil Olympic Stadium, 
a sports complex built in 1986. It was built to host gymnastics competitions at the Seoul Olympics. Now, it is the largest concert hall and stadium in the country, but it has another purpose that is not publicly advertised. Olympic Gymnastics Arena, it's an underground area, a community training center. Many different shamans from different clans train at this center. And it's all sponsored by the government. Since ancient times, the government has always kept the strongest shamans around. Although it's more accurate to say that strong shamans once upon a time created the very concept of government. Because the ability to stand up to monsters gathered people around them. 666 years ago, at the dawn of the Yosian dynasty, the threat of attacks by the yokai disappeared. However, the imperial family built the constellation hall. Over time, spirits and ghosts have become legends. Only the highest levels of government know the truth. And they don't seem to take the situation seriously. Basically, Derek brought Jean here to teach him how to fight smart. The fight will take place without any rules. If Jean can defeat Derek using any available methods, Derek will let him go hunting. In case of defeat, Jin refuses to participate in the hunt. To keep the odds plus or minus equal, Derek will fight without his sword. Shamans have their own individual differences. But they all lose half their powers when they lose their primary weapon. But being completely unarmed, Derek can easily fight the Gwei class Yukai. In other words, if Jeans can beat an unarmed Derek, that means he's stronger than the Guy class. Despite the fact that Derek had already signaled the start of the fight, Jin Jin stood there stiffly. Well, it didn't last long. Amazingly, Jin was able to hide the energy buildup from such an experienced shaman. Certainly shows some level of strength. But even so, Derek was able to fend off his attack. Certainly, Jin is incredibly strong considering he only found out about his power two days ago. But let's not forget that Derek's only fighting with half his strength too, and the fact that Derek didn't ask if his friend was okay. It was a pointless question. He knew the moment he was hit. Besides, he had already witnessed Jin's recovery abilities, and considering his goal was to save his friend by bringing him to his senses, he had no choice. However, the damage done by the genie tended to zero, even if Derek didn't know. He would have guessed that the Jin had goblin blood in him only when he saw his regeneration ability. Didn't Derek suffer more than Jean from that punch? It felt like he'd slammed his fist into the wall with all his might. If he hadn't concentrated enough energy around his fist, he would have broken every bone in his body. Jean, who realized he'd be fine even if his friend stopped holding back. And Derek, who realized how dangerous a yokai he was up against. The conclusions they drew after the first attack were completely opposite. So Jin went on the offensive even though Jin is much faster than before. But his attack style hadn't changed at all, and Derek was able to catch him at it. But even so, Jin was still on his feet. More importantly, he's still attacking. If at first, both friends didn't want to fight at full strength to avoid hurting each other, it's getting further and further apart by the second. Except for his amazing fighting skills, Derek decided to use the Divine Fist spell, thereby driving his friend into the ground. When the dust cleared, Derek smiled and said, Not bad. The thing is in your hands. Is that what I think it is? Apparently so. Jin was over the moon. This was the first time he had ever summoned a goblin club of his own free will. I think we need to clear up one thing that's not obvious. At the moment, Jin is not in the best of health. He still has plenty of physical stamina, but the problem is his spiritual energy. In battle last night, he had used up about 93% of his total energy reserves. And a full resupply itself is not a matter of 24 hours, especially in the human world. But ironically, a state of near total depletion of spiritual energy. It helped him to recreate the circumstances under which he had managed to summon the goblin's baton last time. Although his body wasn't under his control then, but the feeling of his instincts were heightened. So he remembered everything in great detail. Only a goblin could do that. When he saw his friend's transformation, Derek said, I read about the goblin club in the ancient chronicles. I've read about the goblin club in the ancient chronicles and the people who wrote them exaggerated its merits, or it's you. But it doesn't look or feel very impressive. I don't think the chroniclers were wrong, Derek added. However, jumping to conclusions can be life-threatening. Of course, his best friend's words hurt Jean. But he agreed that the club had looked much more formidable last time. A new weapon. It's not the looks that matter. It's its effectiveness when you're trying to kill someone. And from that point of view, the Goblin Club is the perfect weapon. By creating a protective barrier of energy, Derek was able to avoid serious injury. But with a few more blows like that, the barrier might not hold. When the dust from the attack settled, 
Derek looked up and saw that Jean was hanging from the ceiling, and then he asked him what he was doing. Jin laughed and said, Obviously, I'm going to have a hard time dealing with you in close combat, and I don't think you'll be able to block that big thing forever. For that fight, Jin realized something. Now he wouldn't be able to use the same power he had fought with last time. Neither the size nor the strength of the club is any match for its former power, but a couple of the club's abilities are still available to him, namely to change shape and manipulate its movements to a certain extent. And of course, Jean is smart enough to take advantage of just how complete it is. Despite the complete change in form and style of the attack, a club remains a club, and for all that, Derek couldn't help but notice that her strength had doubled. Of course, it wasn't exactly fair to fight like that, but they also have a no-holds-barred fight, especially since Derek himself offered to spar to see if his friend could handle the other yukai. And when fighting them, you don't want to avoid bodacious tricks. After all, when you fight to survive, there is no point in thinking about honor. Even though it's an atypical situation, after all, they're just two teenage friends. Plus, they're two teenage boys, with a youthful desire to be the best at everything. Unlike Derek, Jean wasn't going to fight at half strength. He attacked his friend without a second thought, with the intention of killing him. After all, it was the only way he had a chance to defeat him. And meanwhile, Derek was regretting it. It was getting harder and harder to dodge Jin's attacks. But Derek had something Jean couldn't, and that was combat experience. Just when he thought he was getting used to his friend's speed and fighting style, Jin attacked him with all his might, breaking through his defense barrier with pure energy, realizing he'd broken through Derek's defenses. Jean started to feel bad about hurting his best friend. However, it was unnecessary. There wasn't a scratch on him. Derek, in turn, grabbed the goblin's club, slowing Jin down. And with the spell, the purple energy arrow, Derek wanted to put a bold end to their battle. Despite the extremely high speed of this attack, Jim was able to dodge. But in doing so, he put the club in harm's way. Fortunately, the club is not a physical object, but an energetic one. So it is not very difficult to establish a connection between its separate parts. Now, Derek doesn't carry any so-called ritual weapons, which helps him with many of his techniques. The consequence arising from this problem is the inability to use most of their techniques. Besides, even if he could use them, controlling them would be extremely difficult. But not carrying a ritual weapon does not make a Derek completely unarmed. Out of his own spiritual energy, he recreated the weapon with divine power. And he may have created this sword in haste. But against such overwhelming power, no yukai could resist, and Jin was no exception. Derek hesitated a moment before completing the blow because the opponent was his best friend. But for the same reason. He was able to find the strength to see it through. But the second before the blade touched Jin. He was gone. Well, Jean's fist didn't disappear and it hit the bullseye. Even our hero did not expect this attack to succeed. And then he said in surprise, Why did you give in at the end? Even if you had wounded me, I would have recovered quickly. But Derek wouldn't give in. He put all his energy into that last attack. Well, something went wrong. If his opponent had been even a Kai-class Yukai, he would have simply been cut into, just like a goblin's club. Most likely the tech itself recognized Jin as human and deactivated. In fact, Jin won their fight only because of his humanity. The genie was ashamed of what he'd done to his friend, and he was also worried that he'd broken his nose. But you don't have to worry about that. Derek's self-expressions have been hardened by countless training sessions, and a broken bone and torn skin will heal in a day. Except that Jin had weakened the force of the blow, realizing that his friend's technique hadn't worked. Otherwise, his nose would have turned into a flapjack. When all of a sudden Derek said, you're pretty good. If you want to go after monsters, I won't stop you. But know that I still don't agree with your decision. A deal's a deal. And take this. The djinn asked in surprise what kind of pumpkins Derek wanted to give him. But these weren't just pumpkin trinkets. They're spiritual consumables. They could be thought of as analogous to a grenade. To activate them. The first step is to squeeze them in your hand and say the word Savaha. But if you're pressed for time, you can just throw them on the ground. The main thing is to activate the alchemical formula inside. But before he gave them to the genie, Derek warned him to use them only as a last resort, and never break more than one at a time. Jean was incredibly grateful to his friend, but he couldn't accept such an expensive gift. After all, they contained Derek's energy, an unimaginable amount of it. And making them was incredibly hard work. Derek's eyes almost popped out of his head in surprise. And then he said, Wait, how do you know that? Have you seen these things before? It's not that at all. 
Just by touching them, Jin can feel the energy trapped inside. And upon scanning it, he realized it was the same energy he had felt during the battle with his friend. Jean's hunch was right. The three colored pumpkins were storage devices used mostly with Derek's family. After the vial is coated with a special solution, it becomes capable of accumulating and retaining the owner's energy. This allows shamans to use techniques that require huge amounts of energy at any time and regardless of the situation. In addition, even if it is not their own energy, anyone can use such a bubble by releasing its contents. They say that by the length and location of the lines on the palm of a person's hand, you can determine his fate and character. All of this, of course, is nonsense. However, with some knowledge something can still be learned. Derek's family learned to recognize martial arts aptitude in the hand. They also learned to recognize the lines to become a monk or a shaman. Chiromancy can't boast 100% accuracy, but that Jin can sense the energy within the three colored vessels, his fighting style, leaves no doubt. If Jin wasn't a yokai, Derek would have run to ask his father for permission. No, in this unique case, he wouldn't even need his permission. Derek cracked up at his best friend's limitless potential for magic and martial arts. He'd even considered inviting him into his clan. At least hiding the fact that his best friend is a yukai wouldn't work. He is without a doubt half-human, and his willpower is imagined to be defeated. There's no way he'll ever be accepted by the yokai. Besides not being accepted, there's a huge chance someone will try to kill him, and Derek would lose his reputation forever. But Jin wasn't just the last of the goblins. He's a goblin with the talent of a shaman. Even admitted to himself that if it wasn't his best friend, he would have suspended him too. If Derek had known what was lurking inside his best friend, three days ago, things might have turned out differently. Anyway, Jin stays in the human world. That means he has to be at school during the day and hunting yokai at night. But first, he could use a new school uniform. I can't wait to see how your classmates react when you get to school. I wonder how many people would recognize you if you told me you were a genie. Derek found the whole situation quite amusing, but the genie, on the contrary. And meanwhile, the clock read noon. That meant it was too late to go to school. And since that was the case, Jean suggested we go to a cafe and get something to eat. But Derek suggested that Jean make pork fried rice. At home, it's the most delicious meal he's ever had in his life. Jean was glad to hear that, but he couldn't take Derek home, for he had guests at home. When all of a sudden, Derek said no need to beat around the bush. I told you. Whatever you're doing with the yokai is none of my business. Jean didn't want to run around her friend. The thing is, he did have things to do. Last night, a wise man advised the genie to try a certain establishment. He even gave an address. When he got there, Jin saw an old rusty gate with a dark moon rising sign above it. Just as Jin was about to open that door, it opened on its own, and a huge man appeared in front of him, all tattooed. It took one look for our hero to realize that this man was a yokai, and an incredibly strong one at that. He walked right past Jean, pretended he didn't even notice him. Followed by a man, a girl appeared and said, Welcome. My name is Melissa, and I am a representative of the Dark Moon Rising, with apprehension. But Jin also introduced himself. He said that he had been advised to come here by a yokai elder. Recognizing the name of the arriving guest, Melissa immediately invited him inside. It was unusually dark inside. It felt like there was a thick black fog everywhere. But after walking to the end of the hallway, Jin found himself in an incredibly beautiful place. He entered the Temple of the Rising Dark Moon. Despite the ominous name, it's a colorful place and Melissa is incredibly friendly. After looking around, Jin realized that he was not in Seoul. It was just forests and mountains. Jin turned out to be quite savvy, because the Dark Moon Rising Temple is a space that exists separately from the human world. Melissa said, if you're wondering why this temple exists, here, you might say, is a store that provides various services to the yokai to help them adapt to the human world. The elder told the genie to come, Take a look at this place as soon as it dawns, but even if it's a yokai store, Jin doesn't need to adapt to the human world. And then Jin remembered the scroll Allison gave him. Maybe it could help him. Melissa was not interested in the scroll itself, but its contents pleased her. Jin had a lot of ghost faces with him. You can use the money to buy something for yourself, or exchange it. Some yokai take jobs in the human world, but most live by exchanging coins for the currency of the country in which they live. At the current exchange rate for Korea, one coin would be roughly equal to three million won. And that's with the commission. Jin almost fainted when he heard that. The genie is only 17 years old and has never had more than $300 in his account. And now, if he exchanged all the coins, he'd have about $100,000. But before making a final choice, 
Jean decided to see what products they could offer him. After a couple minutes, a man entered the room holding a small trunk. Inside this chest were perfume pills, three different colors. This is the most popular item in this store, and they're designed to accelerate the recovery of the yokai's spiritual energy. The human world is notoriously poor in spiritual energy, but even in the spirit world, the restoration of energy is a very long process. So the House of the Dark Moon Rising created a pill with a secret recipe, so that in the human world, the yokai would not feel the lack of energy. If you had to choose between money and these pills, the genie's choice was obvious. He needed them much more than money, but he was intensely interested in their colors. Pills of different classes are packed in different colored boxes. They are priced in the standard currency of the yokai world. One coin can buy 10 silver, 3 gold, or 1 black box. The higher the grade of the pill, the stronger its effectiveness, energy recovery. Therefore, the black box is best for full energy recovery. For starters, Jin decided to buy one black-colored pill to recover from his fight with Derek. As for the energy of the yokai, there are two important factors to consider when evaluating it. Size and speed of energy absorption. Vault size represents the maximum amount of energy a yukai can store, which increases with age and by eating other yukai. However, the ability to absorb energy, which determines the rate at which the yokai will regenerate. It is almost impossible to improve after birth. It is more dependent on talent and bloodline. Melissa knew full well that for a high-ranking yukai, absorbing the black pill wouldn't be difficult. But for someone like Jin, it could take weeks. Still, she wasn't lying. By digesting even a tiny portion of the pill, Jin would be able to replenish her meager supply by tonight. According to Melissa's estimation, the black pill for Jin is now in excess. It alone would be enough to completely restore the genie's energy five times over. However, she had never met anyone like Jin before, and her judgment was flawed. At what she saw, the girl was truly horrified. Just now, before her eyes, the simplest loser had absorbed the black saw and completely absorbed all its energy in a few seconds. As a result of absorbing so much energy so quickly, Jin caused an overload. It was only the third day since Jin had become a yukai. And now, for the first time in his life, he felt a hundred percent, if not more, of his own energy. Minutes earlier, in the same house of the rising dark moon, the esteemed yokai has arrived. He's here for a business meeting, when suddenly his assistant said, Sir, the honorable judge has warned us in advance that we have a special guest coming today. I don't know the details. What I do know is that he's a half-breed with goblin blood. The mention of goblins or half-breeds made the yukai angry. He didn't see the point in trying to revive something that had been dead for a long time. But the Dark Moon Rising house is more than just a store. This house has an old tradition that goes back over a thousand years. The owners of the house take in all half-blooded yukai. Being half-bloods, they can't consider themselves human. The other spirits do not recognize them as full-fledged yaks. Eventually, the yokai, who made half-blood children, founded the Dark Moon Rising House, so that their children could feel complete. In a way, it's a very smart move. Even so, the day when her other Kaya recognize half-breeds will never come. Of course, the half-bloods didn't give a damn about their status in the spirit world. After all, most of them lived with half-breeds like them anyway. This Yukai has come to the Dark Moon Rising House to buy himself a legend and set himself up for a lavish life in the human world. They're only serving him as a VIP because he agreed to be on the hunt for those yokai that attack people. Of course he wasn't doing it for the people. He was just annoyed that some spirits from abroad were causing them a lot of trouble. Well, that wasn't the main reason he decided to save the human world. He wanted his father to let him participate in the festival. He's as talented as his brother and sister. The only difference is that he was born a hundred years too late. I want one of the half-breeds to be my companion in the human world. I won't be hunting all the time. And right after that phrase, there was an explosion caused by Jean's overload. Spiritual energy flows within all things like a turbulent river. Living things, with her perspective like bowls in which she lingers briefly. Different beings may touch and use this energy in different ways. The principles underlying it are the same for all. The size of your bowl. Of course you can enlarge it, but it will not work if you fill it with more energy than it can hold. Frankly, a principle so obvious doesn't really need such a detailed explanation. However, for whatever reason, this obvious principle does not apply to the genie. Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that he has goblin blood in him. Such a powerful explosion was naturally noticed. And the very same yokai, 
whose name was Yusum by the way, came to the scene. I realize I caused a lot of trouble with my actions. Jin apologized immediately, even by human standards. He stood out about his politeness and calmness. However, a reservoir of energy, filled to the brim for the first time, clouded his mind. At that moment, his yokai nature overpowered his human nature. His newfound strength added to his confidence. Suddenly, Jin said, I'm really sorry for what happened, but calling me a scoundrel and stuff like that. Shouldn't you be more polite? Yu Sam, clearly not used to being bossed around by anyone, much less a half-breed. So he threw Jin right out into the street without a second thought. After that, the genie's human nature disappeared altogether, and his body was completely taken over by the yukai. And then Yusum said, Melissa, don't worry. I'm not gonna kill him. I just want to teach him some manners. Someone like him could use a lesson or two. Waving his fingers in the air, he attacked Jin again. Seeing him bullying the guest, Melissa shouted, Sir, violence is strictly forbidden in the house, no matter how noble your family is. If the head of the house finds out about such misbehavior, you won't separate easily. But Yusum didn't listen to her and attacked her. The magic he uses is quite unusual. The strange thing was that Melissa felt no energy, nothing at all. Something that you wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye suddenly materialized out of nowhere. Only the Hyokai of the Hetha clan can do something like that. When suddenly Jin said, You're talking about manners after you attack first. That's clearly not an indicator of good manners. Let's move on. When Yusum heard that, he went crazy. If he didn't want to kill him in the beginning. Now he does. But Jin wasn't going to stand by and wait to die. The best defense at all times was offense. And that, and ancient military wisdom he decided to use. When suddenly our hero said, That thing you threw at me was water, right? Maybe the basics weren't Jin's strongest, but he was sure it was a simple manipulation of energy. The first thing that hit him was probably tea, spilled on the floor. But it felt like he'd been hit by a truck. But Jin could smell that the liquid smelled like tea, and he was convinced of his assumptions during the second attack. He saw small drops of water appear in front of him a second before the impact. Looks like moist air and dew drops, also suitable for the use of this magic. Smiling, Jean said, And, if I understand correctly, the farther the water travels, the more painful it hits, because of the acceleration. It's not an experience I'm proud of, but I had a similar experience last night, and if I compare the two of you, you're nothing compared to him. Jin's words made the Yusum truly terrified, for no one had ever understood the principle of his magic before seeing that his opponent was now extremely depressed. Jin decided that now was the best time to attack, even though Jin now had a complete advantage over his enemy. But past experience had told him not to underestimate his enemy. For Yusum, this attack was too obvious. After all, the direction of the blow was visible through the aura. At least Jin wanted him to think it was that obvious. Jin's little but 100% internalized combat experience was evident. Boom! The former greatness and power of Yusum, there's not a trace of it left. Melissa had many reasons to be amazed, which was just bursting out of her mouth. What struck her most of all was how Jin, seeing these techniques for the first time, he was able to quickly and effortlessly figure them out and come up with tactics to counteract them. Moreover, he realized that his movements might be obvious to the enemy, and amplified his aura, interfering with his opponent's perception. At the same time, Jin redirected the energy, changing the direction of the attack, and accurately hit the gap in the enemy's defense. Not that it's impossible. For strong yukai descended from ancient clans, such maneuvers are a base. All of these factors combined to startle Melissa. After all, she'd only known Jin had become a yokai three days ago. Apparently, when the wise man was talking about the goblin's ability to learn quickly, he forgot to mention that they learn in seconds. Looking at his defeated opponent with complete arrogance, Jin said, That's it? Well, what did I expect? If you're so brave... You should be brave enough to admit your guilt and apologize. I'm guilty too, of course, but look at her. How you behaved with a girl who just tried to solve the conflict in peaceful. When suddenly, Jean felt a sharp stabbing pain in his right hand. For the hell of it, there was a piece of ice sticking out of it. And a second later, they tried to attack him. But to no avail, thanks to a full supply of energy, all of the Jin's senses were on high alert. And the piece of ice wasn't ice at all. It was a unique technique of the Hathai clan. Pure fall water. As Jin pointed out earlier, this technique is much like the one used by Yusum, but it had many more uses. It can raise water pressure to incredible levels by creating weapons with hardness comparable to metal, which, once it penetrates an enemy's body, allows the yokai to manipulate all bodily fluids, 
This technique can be used as a poison that disrupts the internal organs as well as the circulatory and nervous systems. Yokai regeneration has a few peculiarities. Losing an arm or leg is no big deal. But if it's a poison or an infection, you can't heal the damage that quickly. With every fiber of his being, Jean could feel himself losing control. His blood pressure was so high that he couldn't see or hear, and blood was gushing from everywhere. Yusum said, You've done well. Maybe it's because you inherited a special rare bloodline. Or maybe it's the fact that you have more yokai blood than human. But let's get something straight. A half-goblin like you is no match for a real yokai, Yusum added. But then something happened that no one expected. On the brink of death, Gina's goblin blood awoke. He was healed in seconds. When our hero regained consciousness, he said, Are you the real Herkai or something else? I don't know. I don't care, but I can tell you one thing for sure. You won't live to see the sunset tonight. Tank. One of the advanced techniques of pure autumn water. Only available to a member of the Hathay clan. This technique makes it possible to take control of a huge flow of water, e.g. from a river, lake, sea, or groundwater. This technique is called advanced because the degree of compression of water in its use violates the usual laws of physics. The real weight of water is hundreds of times greater than you'd think by looking at it. The additional acceleration given to it causes it to be that the force of a water attack is comparable to a train hitting you at full speed. You have to think ahead of time about which baton formula to use because the right shape can multiply the effectiveness of attack, tested in practice. Surprisingly, the solution for the genie was obvious already at the very beginning of the fight. There isn't any particular blade technique he could copy, so Jin just maximized the sharpness of his weapon. And on top of that, he injected the rest of the energy he had gotten from the pill into the blow. Under normal circumstances, Jin wouldn't be able to do this. But these are unusual conditions. Having finished attacking, Yusin expected to see the breathless body of his enemy lying on the floor. But the reality was a little different. After deflecting his attack, Jin simply disappeared. But Jin didn't run away. He just hid in the thick water that was left after the use attack. Suddenly, Jin said, You say losing an arm or a leg scares me? Great. Without a second thought, Jin stripped his enemy of first his right hand and then his left. For a yokai like Yusume, it's not so much that he lost his hands. It's that he lost a half-breed fight. After regaining his human form, Jin said, What's the matter? Is the pain of losing an arm really that unbearable? You said that a real yukai doesn't mind pain. He tried his best to hold back his emotions, but his whole body was shaking like jelly. And to make his lesson memorable, Jin decided to follow through. The reason Yusan is shaking is not because of the pain of losing both hands. The Hathai are a clan within the ranks of the Divine Beasts. They are destined to command others, their lineage as if they were blessed by the gods. The youngest, Usun, has been raised with the utmost care, spoiling him too much. That's why his mind is so weak. The overwhelming sensation of confronting a being superior in everything is a suffocating pressure, which his mind could not bear. Suddenly he screamed, Goblin, forgive me! Jin was surprised at how stupid a Usum could be in ordinary matters. Then he said, I've already paid you back, it's not about me. Apologize to Melissa if you want to get out of here on your own feet, Jean added. But even under the threat of losing his remaining limbs, the Yusum still hesitated and didn't dare approach the girl. Jean was already holding himself back from killing this guy. And then he said, I'm giving you one last chance. If it's so hard for you to apologize, I can help you do it. Eventually, Yusum apologized, and that day left a huge imprint on his mind. Meanwhile, Lydia's at his house looking for him. A couple hours after the incident at Dark Moon Rising's house, her manager named Peter arrived. He was away for the first time in ten years. Who would have thought that something unusual would happen on this particular day? Peter put his assistant in charge before he left. Therefore, by all rules, he had to be responsible for what had happened. However, Peter was not the kind of master who liked to punish people. Especially he knew that the youngest of the Hatha clan was quite extraordinary. For everyone in the Temple of the Rising Dark Moon. Peter was like a father. In turn, his subordinates were like children to him. So Peter was glad Melissa wasn't hurt. As the aide suddenly said, even though it was a black pill, how was she to know that the guy had such a capacity for independent energy? But Peter, who saw the good side of it all, finally got to see the world from a different perspective. Meanwhile, Jin was finally starting to realize what had happened. Unlike three days ago, this time he didn't lose control of his body. The extra energy he just got a little overexcited. All the emotions and the will were his own. After the excess energy was used up, his reservoir stabilized, 
It wasn't until he was able to calm the emotions that overwhelmed him. There's what's called a moment of realization. Frankly, the beating by use was justified. Character alone cannot justify gratuitous violence, which, moreover, could lead to someone's death. As Jin replayed their fight in his mind, he realized that cutting off his hands was also necessary to prevent him from using magic. If the fight were to happen again, Jin would undoubtedly do it again. However, at that moment, he definitely felt a certain sense of satisfaction. The satisfaction of having hurt someone. Maybe it's just a temporary feeling, and in that moment, he had goblin blood in him. When suddenly, someone knocked on the room where Jean was and asked to come in. It was Melissa. Thank God she was okay. Except she had that look on her face like someone had died. When suddenly the girl fell to her knees and said, Please forgive me, master. I was out of my mind, and I was incredibly rude to you. Jean was expecting any number of things to happen, but not one that he could see coming. He screamed, No, you didn't. The responsibility is mine alone. On the contrary, I'm the one who should apologize. I even sent the roof flying. I did. I think it's worth explaining. Melissa felt guilty about advising the genie to buy the black pill. I mean, she wanted to earn more coin, but really, silver or gold would be more than enough. Knowing that, she recommended getting him a black one anyway. And then the girl said, we have more in common than you might think. I'm a half yukai like you. My father is human and my mother is a spirit. Half-breeds are actually not that uncommon. In the past, there have been cases where humans and yukai have had children with each other. A child born of such a union inherits half of the genes of each parent. In other words, it cannot be fully called either a yokum or a human being. Most half-breeds, including her, can still sense energy because they were born with a reservoir. Well they can't absorb energy from the outside, is an extremely miserable and painful existence. After all, all the time they feel thirsty. But because of the peculiarities of their bodies, they cannot quench it. And even if they take one of those pills, all it'll do is wet their lips. So Melissa tricked Jean into selling him the pills. But Jin is the exception to the rule. Even though he's a half-breed, his abilities are incredible. So much so that even the elder called him a full-fledged yukai. As a merchant, she committed the unforgivable crime of defrauding a customer. This is a sin she can only atone for by dying. Melissa was ready to take whatever punishment Jean could come up with. Suddenly a voice came from the doorway and said, I don't think you're apologizing right. The phrase, I'll accept anything. In the end, you're just shifting responsibility to the person you're apologizing to. I apologize for the inconvenience. My name is Peter, and I am the steward of the Dark Moon Rising House. This was the first time the genie met the head of this temple, when suddenly, Gina shouted sharply, I accept your apology for the mistake you made. There's no need to spill anyone's blood. But after a little thought, Gina decided that returning the money for the pill would be enough to make him forget about the situation. It may have sounded more like an excuse than an apology. Peter was still grateful for Jean's acceptance of him. The whole thing about killing a merchant who was trying to cheat a customer was very strange to the genie. He didn't see anything terrible in it. Just the two of us. Peter suggested a reconciliation meeting in the near future. He told the Jinan that he had fought with a junior member of the Hatha Divine Beast Clan. Jin was very surprised to hear this. He had heard of this clan before. He had imagined them to be incredibly strong and intelligent, which was not the case with the Yusum. But before the reconciliation meeting, Peter wanted to organize an informal meeting where everyone could speak out about what had happened. After all, both guests had been hurt because of their irresponsibility, but Jean decided against the idea. He knew there was no point in a reconciliation meeting. And then he said, It doesn't take much strength to offer to take responsibility, and if any of his clan comes after me, I'll tell them the truth. It was he who answered my violent but appropriate request, to consider my actions and apologize to Melissa. So I just did what I had to do. Added Jean.